Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to answer the question, are car headlights getting brighter? Now a lot of people have asked me this question and me, as I get older, it seems at night that those headlights coming toward me seem a lot brighter than they used to be, so let's do a scientific test. Just unzip my little light meter here, take the cover off, and we're going to measure. And we're going to do it scientifically, one foot away from the low beams and we'll measure it. And here we have 1210 lux on this 1994 Toyota Celica. Now let's see what this 2007 Matrix has on it. And here we go, 1925 lux. Yes, it's definitely brighter. And just for kicks, let's try an in-between this 2002 Lexus ES300. And lo and behold, it's 1381, so it's in between those. So on these Toyotas, 94 was the lowest, 2002 was higher, and 2007 was the highest. So they actually are getting brighter. And they're actually even brighter bulbs. Now years ago, a company sent it to me, so I put high intensity discharge HID lights in my Celica. Here's the remnants of them. I unplugged it, but you can see it's dirty now. These bulbs, some of them claim that at midnight, you turn them on, they're brighter than the midday sun at noon. And there's a reason I disconnected them. They're still sitting in there, but they're not plugged into anything. And that's because those things are so bright, people would be flashing their lights at me at night, saying I'm blinding them. So I went back to the normal headlights the thing came with, which are the stock halogen bulbs. Halogen bulbs actually are quite good bulbs. They put out a lot of light now, like any other filament bulb, there's a filament in it, eventually it burns out. They get extremely hot. So they use a reasonable amount of energy, where the new cars that use the LED light them any diodes, you can make them any brightness you want, but they don't use much power, they don't get that hot. With the use of plastic bulb assemblies, your whole headlamp assembly, if it gets cracked, you got to replace the whole thing, which can cost hundreds of dollars, even though the bulb itself just pops in and out. A lot of times this plastic crap will just break or it'll fade away and you can't see through it anymore. So it certainly doesn't last as long as solid glass did. But the designers love them because they can flow with the body of the car and they're aerodynamic. Hey, when I was young, they had cars that the headlights popped down so it was aerodynamic and then at night they popped up. But of course at night they were popped up and they blocked the wind more. This is aerodynamic the whole time. Now going back to the bulbs themselves, these halogen bulbs are still widely in use. They can last a long time. They put out a lot of brightness. You can buy different levels of brightness. But a while back they came out with those HID high intensity discharge bulbs like I had put on this and took it off because it was too bright, which is kind of funny because they used them in Europe first. And then years ago, you couldn't import a European car over here with those headlights. They said, those are illegal, they're too bright. You have to swap them back to the American system. So customers I had that like imported Mercedes from Germany, got them cheap and bring them over here and then sell them. They had to change the headlight assemblies in order to get them to pass inspection legally in the United States. The first one that I ever saw was HID that was legal in the United States was a big old Mercedes Benz. And back in those days, the stupid bulb, you know, it's the same size as this halogen, just a little bitty thing, was like $275 for one stinking little bulb. And on those systems, you really got to replace them in pairs, because if you change one that often messes with the balance, then your old one will burn out soon after. So you really had to change them in pairs. And that was a lot of money. It was going away from the HID in most cases, and going to LEDs, light emitting diodes. And that's for two main reasons. These things can be made to put out whatever type of light you want. They can be different colors, they can be different intensities, and the main thing is they run really cool, so they use less power, which of course affects the gas mileage a tiny amount. But with all the rules in the United States to get better gas mileage, any tiny amount is better as far as they're concerned. And of course, these are easier to control by computers. They use less power. They're easier to switch on and off. So a lot of the manufacturers go into these LED systems. And as I said, being LEDs, they can easily be made to match any of the laws in the area that you live in. Let's say it only allows a certain amount of brightness. They can easily make them that way. And of course, then there's the aftermarket boys. So when you see those kids driving around their drifter cars and they got weird colored headlights coming out or super bright ones, all they're doing is taking out the factory ones and putting in whatever they want. You can get them super bright. You can get them any color you want. 
Realize, of course, there's laws in most places when you get your car inspected, your headlights have to meet a certain spectrum of not too dim and not too bright, and they can bypass it by just popping one of these things in, which is one of the reasons that these LEDs sometimes get a bad image in the mind of the public. They see these kids driving around with these super bright lights, and they say, oh, those LED lights, we hate those things. Oh, they blind us at night. Well, those guys are doing it illegally. When they're made, in the factory, by the manufacturers, they can make these LEDs put out whatever type of light that they want, if they use correctly. Just realize, if you have a non-LED system and you go into LED, you got to buy a good set. Like these Basla bullets, you can see, they've got all the electronics built in. This just plugs into your car like it normally did, and this is going to be the ballast resistor and everything, so they work correctly. A lot of guys will just get the cheap ones that you just stick in your headlamps and then either wire or just plug them into yours. If they don't have the ballast resistor, ah, you could have problems. These are correctly designed. You can put them in, have no problems at all. So if you're thinking about converting yours to LEDs, don't go the cheap route. Don't buy these Chinese ones that are $19.95 for a pair. Buy decent ones. They're generally going to be anywhere from $30 to $60 a piece for the good ones. Now, you do want good headlights on your car. For example, if you're on an onlit road like out in the country and you're driving 40 miles an hour on your low beams, you can actually outdrive your beams, meaning by the time you see something, it's too late to stop like a deer and you're going to hit the thing. So you definitely want to have headlights so that you see far enough ahead. And of course, that's where the high beams come in. Now, I'm a city boy. I rarely use them. Sometimes you don't even need headlights in Houston. You can just drive around and see it's so bright in the city. It's a good idea every once in a while to turn your headlights on in the daytime, put your brights on. Make sure they're still working, because if you need them in an emergency, it's too late to check them then. So just make sure they're working every once in a while. Now, while you're checking your headlight, check the lenses too. Now, this is an old glass lens, so really, unless it's shattered, it's perfectly fine. The glass doesn't fade. But if you got plastic ones, like this, check them to make sure they're not faded. Now these are replacement ones. I like the style better. They got black inside. They look a lot cooler. But the old ones that were on it, they were getting pretty faded when they were six years old. Here on this older Hyundai, you can see these things are faded like mad. This is all faded here. And when they fade, guess what? You get less light coming out, so you can't see as well. It isn't just a cosmetic thing. You want a clear lens, so at night, you get clear headlights shining out far enough that you can see what's happening. And of course, you can clean them with anything. They make headlight polishing kits, but if you're really cheap, heck, get some toothpaste. Rub it down. You can get them pretty shiny that way. Even if you don't want to buy one of those $16 polishing kits, use your toothpaste. Any mild abrasive is going to make them shine. Now, of course, toothpaste is a real mild abrasive, otherwise you wear your teeth down to nothing, so it actually works quite well for buffing those things out. Now, as I've shown, since the lights are getting brighter, throwing glare on people, there are actually adaptive driving beam techniques that some manufacturers have, that when they sense somebody coming, they dip the beams, or if it's got LEDs and there's multiple arrays, it turns some of them off so it doesn't blind people. But that adds a lot of money to the price of the car, anywhere from $1,600 to $3,800 more than the normal headlights on the ones that they're making today, which of course is in higher end cars, so as time goes on, those systems will probably get cheaper. And yeah, those systems break all the time. I work on them on German luxury cars, and man, they are expensive to fix when they break, and break they do. So now you know the truth about it car headlights and the annoying truth that yes they are making them brighter and brighter but they're trying to add some technology so it doesn't glare the other drivers when they get close so you won't have to worry about the old guy in the highway who's got his high beams on and he just leaves them on the whole time driving around blinding everyone in sight so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell